Hey everyone, I'm Jake, the Dungeon Master for Venture Ventures Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. This is episode 37. We're getting towards the end here, hopefully. Uh, previously, on the, in the last episode, our group was sucked into the memories or the memory of Lulu the Holophant, who was once the mighty steed of Zeriel in her angelic form. Uh, now she is the Archduke of Avernus, the first layer of hell. And uh, in that dream, they experienced a town under siege, Idleglen, and they defended it from various demonic aggressors, including a demon lord, and were mostly successful for, for especially at the beginning. And then the demon lord came and uh demon lord be demon lording and they were saved by zariel swooping out of the sky on the back of lulu uh who she proceeded to kick him out of uh the town back to the abyss and they were shot back to the cathedral where the um, Zeriel's sword is located. The cathedral grew out of the ground around the sword when it was plunged into the soil of Avernus. And uh, specifically, right right at the end of the last episode, uh, I asked who wanted to try and retrieve the sword, and we had two clerics really just going for, you know, trying to prove who's holiest, who's who's got the I'm going to out cleric you. Yeah. And and so we ended Go ahead with and try with uh Horton grappling Sir Jazzy and at this point gentlemen uh I need Horton you I need grapple checks basically. Uh Sweet. I believe Draco and uh Shabby are just watching. We're just doing if... athletics. You need to make a strength athletics check, and uh, Brian or Sir Jazzy can choose athletics or acrobatics. 13. Oh, I'm going athletics. Yeah. Uh, that would be a 27. Okay. I'm real good at that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say you can get to the... You guys aren't more than... Uh, like 10 feet away from the sword, so it's not going to take you more than one round to get there. I'll say you get to the sword first, and I assume you're going to grab it. So I say that I do successfully slap him in the face with my trunk as I'm running for the sword, and he goes for my legs, which is as I believe he described. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. Previously, he went to, to cut out my knees, but his really short, stubby dwarf legs couldn't do shit. Because <laughs> he has really stubby, short dwarf legs. <laughs> I think it's harsh on the dwarves, but it is uh, <laughs> uh, because I win. <laughs> either way, you get to the sword, and uh, I assume you pull it, right? No, I'm just gonna just gonna You're look, just gonna at, look it. at it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna pull. Uh, when you do, uh, a massive explosion happens outward, and blinding rays of light blind all of you not the condition just momentarily uh and the cathedral around you including the scab around it uh, and why am i hearing myself now sorry oh um <laughs> i was checking the music <laughs> oh okay cool uh yeah, the uh, scab and the citadel around the sword all are blown outwards, including any demons that may be skulking around the scab that you made your way through earlier. Um, and you find yourselves, all of you aren't affected, uh, but you suddenly find yourself under the red skies of Avernus uh, with no demons around you that you can see uh when you attune to it i'm also assuming that you immediately attune to it jazz yes. 
Yeah, yeah. If I need to. Uh, That's yeah. what gets me the goods. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Yale at this point says goodbye and thanks you and fades away and passes into the afterlife. Uh, but all of you see Sir Jazzy start to glow in radiant light. Uh, the the blade itself, the sword, was glowing just sitting there, and it seems to have, have transferred some of its radiance into Sir Jazzy as it starts to transform him and change him into a being with certain ideals, bonds, traits, and flaws. Uh, so we're going to get into the mud a little bit with some some uh, stats and stuff that immediately changed for you, Sir Jazzy. Does Jarvis, okay. see, you are any, now... does Jarvis see him anymore, or is he just gone? You don't see I mean, him. sorry, not Jarvis, Draco. Uh, you don't see him now. He's disappeared. Cool. Uh you don't see Lulu either. I, I think I've told you that, but um, yeah. uh, you are immediately lawful good. And uh, you are now the most beautiful version of yourself. So <laughs> I don't know how to describe that for an elephant. An elephant? Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, but you're 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 definitely glowing, and um, you gain the following traits: and angelic language. You can speak, read, and write celestial. Already could. Uh, cool. You can you can doubly speak it. I can, uh, I'm real fluent now. You have resistance to necrotic and radiant damage. Celestial resistance. Divine presence. Your charisma score becomes twenty. Ha <laughs> ha! That's my that's my dumb stat. <laughs> Perfect. And as you're watching this transformation, feathered wings sprout from the elephant's back. Not dissimilar from Lulu, just not gold. Uh, and they grant you a flying speed of 90 feet and the ability to hover. You also have true sight and your eyes become pools of silver. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so you can see in uh, normal and magical darkness, uh -huh. uh, invisible creatures, all that. You have a new personality. Right, naturally. Uh, roll a d8 for me. Happily. Let me get the boots. <laughs> no, I need them. <laughs> uh, it says your new personality trait is I cut to the chase in every conversation. I need a d6 roll. D6 roll. Three. Right, middle of the road on both of these. Responsibility. It is the duty of the strong to protect the weak. Now for your bond, I need another D6. Of the strong to protect the weak. One. Bond, I have a favorite religious hymn that I constantly hum. And then a, a flaw. I need another D6. Six. I ignore those who do not support my plans, for my calling is higher than all others. Oh, nice. Great. So he's an asshole. <laughs> but a very righteous one. I'm just the worst asshole. kind. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. Uh... Uh, you also hear a voice in your head uh, speak to you. The sentience of the sword of Zeriel uh, says to you. Welcome. We have a mission. I feel it. We must redeem Zariel. Let's bring her to the light. <clears throat> and uh, you can read about the other Ooh. stuff. Bless you. But I need to roll on a... I need to have you roll some random properties. So... Yep, sure. <laughs> I need you to roll a d100. My favorite thing to roll. There's a hundred possibilities. 13. 
While attuned to the artifact, you gain proficiency in one skill of the DM's choice. Uh, we will say it is... Religion. Sweet. I'm not... Yeah, great. <laughs> Go ahead and roll again, uh, D100. That should help with the redeeming. 17. Roll again. 42. While attuned to the artifact, you have resistance against fire damage. Sweet. Fire. That's that's useful. Seems helpful up here. Yep, yep, yep. And Down here. that's it. Okay. So uh, this change occurs, and Lulu is uh, in awe, but she's the first to speak and says, Are you still you, or? I'm a better me. Much like you can become. Lulu, why are you still so small? <laughs> Well, I can change, I think, now. I just had a bunch of memories flood back to me now that the Citadel's broken all around us. Um, I'm pretty sure I can transform like I used to, so that's cool. I don't need to now, though. You can, and you will later, though. Yes. Sit and with your memories. We, we have to save Zeriel, right? We have to redeem her, yes. Yes. Bring her back to the light. Uh, what do you guys do? The rest of you. So I'm furious. Draco, we uh, had, we hear all that? <laughs> Draco doesn't hear any of this conversation <laughs> because they're both magical, and I turn to Shabby and Horton. Well, the swords, say, the sword part, you didn't. This part just now, Dave, was between Lulu and Jazzy. So yes, you heard that. I didn't. What can? You, what are you going to turn into, Lulu? Just a bigger version of you, you. Remember when I flew out of the sky in the dream just a few minutes ago? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I <laughs> headbutted. That was you. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I used like to a, work out a lot in uh, Mount Celestia, like fourteen times a day. So is uh, that what you call a bigger form, like a mastodon, or what is it called? Yeah, it's. Mammoth? You can call it a, a mastodon. Uh. That's Shabby, awesome. Horton, uh, did the elephants come back with us? Elephant? What do you Elephant. mean? Just the one that we've had with us. And then the annoying one. Where are they? Well, the big one's right there, and the little one's right there. No, they're not. Gentlemen, we have business to attend to. We need to find Zero. But your ass has been blind for like hours now. I don't know why this is confusing you. I in the just, distance. You're just gonna have to trust us. Well, I just saw them a little while ago, but I guess uh, we're. Oh, this ma this magic that keeps happening. Uh, we're all I together. Need to, I need to figure out a way to get get this fixed. Do you do you know how to do anything? Do you know how to fix this? Yes. I haven't been able to see anything. But I can't do it now. Days. Later. <laughs> Let me see. Yes, he just stabs him with <laughs> a real sword. <laughs> just smacks him in the face with it. <laughs> with the flat um, of the blade. I can try something now, but I don't think it'll work. Are I have something better. As I Horton? Or... Yeah, I, as Horton. I don't mind waiting. Um, I mean, I could try to dispel magic on you now, but... uh. I don't know if you have like some magical illness. I'll probably have to sleep before I can try to cure any of that. Yeah, if you if it was like a uh, a healing thing, I could help you. I, I I feel I have my other powers back as well, but I don't have greater restoration, which is what I fear you need, Draco. Same. Okay, I'll just I'll just wait and 
hear voices in my head. It's okay. And I'm pretty sure that has a material component. Yes, it uh, 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 does. Which I don't think we have. Well, funny you should say that. Uh, in the distance, you see the sinking city, the sinking moat of a city floating just above the river Styx, very close to the river Styx. Uh, and as you're viewing it, someone familiar pops into view, and it is Bell. Uh, and Bell says, I see you've retrieved the sword. This asshole did. Yes. Well. They stare daggers at Bell. He doesn't care. Uh, yeah, no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he uh, says, so you have a choice now. I'm sure all of you want to save El Terrell. Yeah. And or save Zeriel. Yep. So those adamantine rods that you retrieved for me have a special purpose and they can unlock the companion that floats above the city that once was a light with radiant radiance and kept undead away. Uh, it is one of the keys to returning El Terrell to the material plane. That and the chains that are pulling it down need to be sheared. I think if you redeemed Zeriel, she would probably help you with that. But... It is up to you how you proceed from here. I do have some things to offer you to help you on your journey. And uh, before you on a table appearing out of thin air, you see some charms, uh, multiple copies. There's five different charms with multiple copies for each one. Uh, Bell says, this charm is uh, of diabolical inspiration, and mechanically it grants advantage nine times total, no recharge, on ability checks, attack rolls, or saving throws. Uh, the next charm, he says, is of heroism. It grants 10 temp temporary hit points and bless for one hour. The next charm is of lesser conscription. This one will summon a barbed devil, two bearded devils, or three spine devils. The next one is charm of restoration. It has six charges, four charges to cast greater restoration, two charges to cast lesser restoration. The fifth and final charm I can offer you is charm of the adamant. Uh, it can grant you... 30 temporary hit points nine times and can't be and you can't be charmed or frightened and mechanically you can't stack that it would just be like use 30 you have to reactivate it yep. and uh, as the weapon maker for the armies of hell in the blood war I am Uniquely able to offer you just about anything you want in your fight to redeem Zeriel. If it does come to a fight, you will need help. And if I can provide you with something, please let me know right now. You said you're I a bet. weapon maker. What about armor? <clears throat> I have armor. Full plate. And full plate appears before you. Magical full plate? Uh, <laughs> like a plus one, sure. Sweet. Bell, perhaps I could... you could help me what? with my uh, situation. I was I was playing with some of my magic, and uh, 
I did something to myself where I, I can no longer see any magical items or Can you people. see Belle and talk to her? I can hear her, no. but I can't see her. <laughs> I have no idea where she's at, but I'm talking to her somewhere. Belle's definitely a dude. I mean him. Belle sorry. is a dude. I yeah. mean him. <laughs> uh, doesn't know. Can't see it. <laughs> can't see him. Yeah. <laughs> um, Belle tells you, Horton... Why haven't you just cast Greater Restoration on him? Because I don't have the components to do so. What do you need? What is it? Diamond dust, I think? Let me double check. <laughs> <laughs> like a thousand gold worth? Something obnoxious. No, it's not. It's not that much. Oh, really? Oh, no, it's not. Uh, what level is greater? Fifth. Fifth? It is 100 gold worth of diamond dust. Yeah. Which the spell consumes. And I'll need to sleep before I can do it. He uh, snaps his finger and a bag of diamond dust, enough for two castings of greater restoration, appear. Ooh. One other thing. Uh, also with my magic mishap, I seem to have lost my cloak of protection. I do have these, uh, these sh shiny little spectacles uh for charming uh, i was wondering if perhaps i could trade them maybe for something and maybe if you have another cloak of protection or something similar that i could trade it for they're of no use to me unfortunately i don't want your glasses but you can have a cloak of protection as long as you follow through with our deal and a cloak of protection appears in front of you <laughs> do i see it <laughs> sure i mean it's an item not a thing okay not, uh, a, not a creature. No, that was a good line. It's an item, not a thing. I like that. <laughs> it's a good one, Jake. I don't think I can see anything magical. I don't think it's just people. I don't think I, I see the rings on the table. Creatures. Magical creatures. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I so I can right. see the rings. Beautiful. Um, Trunks. I Trunks. could use a magical weapon of any sort. Mine is a very standard mace. I assume you want to hammer or mace either will do a plus one mace appears in front of you saucy anything well, else if it's, not, if it's not too much trouble i'd love uh some braces of defense sure you got them and a mall you got them a plus one mall and bracers of defense. Thank you very much, sir. Don't you have a plus two something right now? Or is it a plus I have a one? Plus one great axe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jerry had a plus two mall. Yeah. Is there anything else? Well, while we're at it, if it's on the menu, do you perhaps have a, a ring that could help me store additional s spells? A ring of spell storing? Sure. Awesome. I'm going to snag that charm that gives advantage. Okay. Yeah, I also wanted the advantage charm. Okay, there's multiple copies of each one. That's about ten. To if I get to yank it in front of Horton again, it's that ten, would You said bad. ten charges, right? Nine. Nine, Nine? charges. And doesn't recharge. Hey, Jazzy, do you need those boots anymore now that you sprouted wings? Storm gave me those. <laughs> no, he didn't. Well, I, I took them, but it was on a mission from Torm. He wanted me to have them. No, no, you stumbled across them while you happened to be on a mission. No, I slayed an Oathbreaker Paladin of Bahamut, uh, and he was wearing them, and Torm wanted me to kill him, and... Torm so, gave them to me. No, 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 no. Torm wanted you to kill him. Good job. Mission accomplished. And I did. He also happened to have some boots that you stole. Well, I didn't steal them. Torm gave them to me. They weren't uh, yours before, and you took them. Well, yes, but I took them because they were given to me. Torm gave them to me. <clears throat> And so what you're saying is, is 
maybe Torm wants me to have them now because would, would he like just me to gave carry you, you somewhere. No, 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 no. Hmm. Mm, you might be nope. right. You might. You might be right. Torm, gave Torm would want you to Torm spread gave your you blessings. Better wings. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I give you my winged boots of Torm. <laughs> Don't pay attention to the dragon wings coming off of them. And you can find the adamantine rods in your sex now do you think we'll need Zeriel for the rod part or just the breaking of the chains she may not like you destroying the companion cube that she put in place in order to secure Elturel so when she is redeemed she will understand noted Last question. Do you know where she is? Yes, I do. And he turns around and uh, in the distance you see a massive uh, blade slicing through the air. And <laughs> it's heading towards it's what you've seen before. It's one of these battle uh, these battleships infernal battleships uh, uh and um it's heading towards uh el Terrell, and he says to you guys well i guess i could expedite this process of getting you to el Terrell. let me ask you what do you think you're going to do you're gonna present yourselves to zariel and try to redeem her first i really don't care as long as Zeriel is uh, well you know not does, does, does redeemed exactly mean kill to do. I don't care what you do I'm having trouble understanding what redeem means in this context. bring her to the light shabby she will be redeemed not slain and what is the light the opposite of where we are currently so we just have to take her away from Avernus? You have to break the or chains that bind her to us, Modius. Yeah. I think presenting the sword, her former sword, and speaking to her, convincing her, will be enough. If you're not convincing enough, well... Good She's going to try to kill us if we don't convince her. Long story short, I'm assuming. She is the Lord of Avernus now. <clears throat> Most likely. So, quick question. I will, yeah. Uh, for the charm of the charm of restoration that is the greater and lesser restoration, does that charm actually require material components to cast or? No. Okay, then I'm going to take that for one okay. of those. What are you taking, Shabby? Oh. Uh, um, so the nine advantage go over it. charges? Yeah, what about it? That's just any saving throw? Yeah, it grants you advantage on ability checks, attack rolls, or saving throws when you use it. Okay, yeah, I'll take that one. I think that's all of you, right? Yep. Okay. I'll get you to El Terrell right now. And when he says now, all of you are squeezed through a toothpaste tube, infernal oh. toothpaste tube, and ejected on the streets of El Terrell that is still in ruins even more so now. And not too far away, you see a imposing figure with wings. Let me see if I can find 
the picture that I wanted of Zariel. Um, oh, she, she has <laughs> she has a halo of fire above her head, bald head, burning eyes, and impressive infernal armor that Bell likely made for her. Uh, that's not the picture I wanted. Sure. Screw it. We'll just use this. Got that damn song in my head. Ducktails. Woo! I can't stop saying whale. 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 Boom, boom. Just the cover. Just the cover. Good image. Oh, that's pretty cool. And she has her eyes locked on Jazzy and the sword. And she flies down. Belle is obviously no longer there. Uh, she flies down and is hovering a few feet above the ground, staring at you guys. What do you guys do? Uh, does she seem like she's coming at us aggressively? She's about 50 feet away right now and just holding that distance, just hovering. Good morrow, Zeriel. I will stow my weapon and, like, put my hands up. I will hover up into the air a, across from her um, and hold this, hold the, hold her sword point down, um, you know, in front of me like this. Yeah. And just state. My weapons were pre-stowed. Um, Zeriel, return to the light. Return to the halls of Mount Celestia. This is not your place. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you're coming on too strong. Why? Too strong. You do not Why? belong here. <clears throat> you can do more good up there. You think grasping my sword? No, my sword. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You think grasping my sword will change me? Redeem me? Only if you will it. The power is yours. How will I continue the blood war? As an angel. Defeating both sides, devil and demon alike. She pauses and says to all of you, why would I, should I be redeemed? To save Elturel. <laughs> I brought Elturel down here. Why would I want to save Elturel? You were well, tricked by the down father of lies, enough, don't you think? Say that again, Dave. I think I think they've been down here long enough. So basically, how this is going to work, it's going to be a group skill check, and uh, for you guys trying to convince her to grab the sword. And the sword, while all this is going on, is saying to you, Jazzy, urgently, more urgently as time goes on, you must convince her of her redemption. She and is 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 not giving you any good details on how to do that, but is just adamant that yeah. uh, you get her to grab the sword. So uh, if 
if none of you want to make a argument, I, I want to make an argument. Okay, yeah, go I've got a little something. Go Zeril, um, let me just ask you a question: How is the blood war going? It's eternal. Yeah, but. Like, are you winning right now? What's the score? What's the score? Two to one. <laughs> uh, Zeriel looks at you confused and says, it's an ongoing battle that we must smite the demons back to the abyss from where they... I, I imagine you've been fighting this war for, what, like... a. Decades? Yes. Thousands of years? The blood How long? war has gone on for as long as time itself. Has, hasn't it been going on long enough? You know? Is it ever going to end? It's so. going to continue whether or not you're here or I'm here. Yeah. But the demons... It's going to continue whether or not you're here, right? <laughs> you can do that. Uh, the demons don't stop they flood the river and invade this lair if they pass if they defeat us on avernus they will overrun the rest of the layers of hell and emerge on the material plane destroying everything right but it's going to keep going whether or not you're involved right most certainly so don't you want to go back to your old self and be an angel? It was my duty then as it is now to destroy the hordes of abyssal demons. And it was the lack of action from Mount Celestia and the upper plains that caused me to come down here without their help and wage the war as we do today. That was a long time ago, though. I'm going to say, Dave, uh, just go ahead and make a persuasion check. And you can use your charm or not. Hell yeah, I'm going to use my charm. Got nine charges. Persuasion. Ooh, I don't have good persuasion. <laughs> Ooh. So a 16? 16, okay. Okay. We'll find out after I go through all of you uh, whether what happens. Uh, and I need you, Jazzy, unless you have another argument to make. I to... do. Okay, go ahead. Um, going off of what Shabby was saying, I, re I reiterate, your efforts down here are futile. You were tricked by the father of lies. This is not your place. It is my place to kill demons. Are you more effective now than you were then? The eternal blood war rages on, notwithstanding. But now I have the support of legions of devils, whereas the Upper Plains and Mount Celestia and all their wisdom didn't see the logic in me coming down here in the first place. The logic was sound coming down here. You were led astray at that point. This is not the way. Okay, make a persuasion check. I will burn my advantage charm. Okay. Mark off how many charges, obviously, <laughs> yep. for... I'm yep. <laughs> doing that now. <laughs> uh, that'll be a mod 20. Okay. Horton. There was once a time when you sought to protect the people of El Terrell, or you would not have created the compendium. There's no reason now for you to damn them when you have the power in front of you to revert that. Make a persuasion check. I will also burn a charge. Okay. Oh, thank God. 15. Okay. 
<laughs> First one was in that one. <laughs> Good old advantage. <laughs> Draco, come on down. <laughs> well, if you return, you've been down here and you've been fighting this fight. And before you came down here, they didn't believe you, but you've made you've made somewhat of progress. I feel if you return, you have enough evidence to convince them, or enough enough examples and experience to convince others to help you and change their minds. Now, make a persuasion check. Well, I was going to use Tides of Chaos, but I rolled a nat twenty. Nice plus nines for twenty nine. Nice. And Lulu steps forward and she gets closer than you guys are to Zeriel and she says Zeriel we rode into battle together for years and years and we can do so again if you just grab your sword return to the light we can continue to wage this war, but but you have to stop. You have to relinquish your place as the Archduke of Avernus. Please. And uh Out of all the arguments, Zeriel is moved by seeing Lulu just uh, just seeing her is moving to Zeriel. And so let's see what Lulu gets. <laughs> God. Okay. You know what? I'm actually going to do the math on the average of these instead of... What did Lulu roll? Probably close. <laughs> I laughed I laughed because I think it made it like so I couldn't just do mental math. Uh, so yeah, it made it... I laughed because it was close. Come on. Derp. You derp. She flies closer to you guys. Very imposing figure. Large in stature. She reaches her hand out towards you, Jazzy, waiting for you to present the sword. I, hovering midair, kneel and present the sword with my two hands and trunk, um, just holding it up, uh, though... I am keeping one hand pretty close to the hilt to grasp it if I need to, if this goes surprisingly south. <laughs> I'm going to read box text now because box text is great, right? It's just so Everyone great. loves it, especially hey, you. I'd say you are probably, of all people I know, the biggest fan of box text. Own it. Text. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's how I would decide my presidential vote. If one of the candidates came out in favor of box text, yeah. it doesn't if, matter if they, if they read from box text and you could tell that they were reading box text. <laughs> it has to be D, &D <laughs> box text. It can't just be like teleprompter box nope, text. Nope. That beige, that darker beige box text. Let yep. me exactly. <laughs> uh, so 
Zeriel's trembling hand reaches towards the gleaming hilt of her sword. Her fingers brush against it, and she grimaces as radiant light sears her flesh. As her grip tightens, she gr gasps in pain, then speaks an oath through tears of confusion, sorrow, and dawning joy. I, Zeriel, supplicate myself before the holy light of justice. If it should accept me, I vow to take this blade once more in its service. The archdevil's words hang in the air for a silent moment, and she glances upwards in agonized uncertainty. Don't mind the siren, if you can hear it. Uh, then Zeriel is bathed in a brilliant wash of radiant light. Her fiery halo disappears and feathers burst from her leathery wings. All of her diabolical features vanish as her angelic form is restored. At the sight of this blessed transformation, Lulu gasps in delight and transforms into a celestial mammoth with golden fur, feathered wings, and gleaming tusks. And for a few moments, you take this in, and the red sky of Avernus and you're an Elturel, if you remember, your characters wouldn't remember this, but your previous characters uh, remembered seeing lightning strikes around Elturel, and you still see that. Um, and it lights up the sky here. Uh, but now, as this has happened to Zeriel, the sky is just clenching and sparking with rage and you can see that the red turns transparent for a moment and be behind the red for just a few milliseconds you see a massive the coils of a massive snake wrapped around the entire sky without end just flashing and Zeriel her angelic form restored. Feathers start to fall from her wings and her face starts bearing the signs of, of battle as cuts, scrapes, burns, and other mutilations that she may have once experienced, possibly when she made a pact with Asmodeus, they return to her and she falls to the ground, weakened, barely alive. And Lulu in her massive form runs to her and in a, in a protective stance says, Asmodeus surely has sensed this and he will be sending people to exact his revenge. Zeriel can recover quickly, but we must protect her in the short amount of time that it takes for her to regenerate. And as she says that, you see two winged creatures appear out of a portal ripped in the sky and they fly down uh they have long whips a long bow and they are large in size um can i just ask a really important question is sir jazzy still really good looking uh he has reverted back to his normal his normal okay. self I yeah, Shabby just leans ground, over and goes, don't really worry, I still roughly. think you're really good looking. Uh, I appreciate that, Shabby, so much. These winged devils have red wings and full plate infernal armor. Uh, they look beautiful if it weren't for their infernal heritage. No offense, Draco. Uh, and they fly towards you. And we need to roll initiative now. 
Yay for another thing Draco can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you fucking charm, you fool? Why don't you use your charm? Oh, yeah, that's right. I do yeah. have the charm. You have the power. I forgot, now. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> I wrote that down as a note to remind myself to do that. And when the storytelling was over. I got a good roll for a cleric. Uno momento. Did we ever did we ever long rest? Nope. <laughs> okay, Draco, what'd you get? Uh, 15. Shabby. Uh, 23. Horton. 16. Jazz. 10. Shabby, you are up first. How far away are they? Uh, they are fifty feet away. Oh damn! Flying towards you. <clears throat> are they just side by side? Yep. Well, fifty feet is too far for me to run. Um, I am gonna run. Do you no longer have your javelin? That's what I'm saying. I'm 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 gonna run like as far to the side of one of them as I can get to try to line them both up. Okay. Uh it's five feet the line that you need for the five feet. The javelin of lightning. Yo, yeah, the width of it. Um yeah, yeah five feet wide. Uh with 40 feet of movement, I don't think you can get far enough to the side. You can still get one of them. Okay. But I don't think I'll you can just, get... Is there a way to, dis to distinguish between the two? Like, um, They're both wearing the exact same thing. Uh, if you just want to... They're twins? Twinsies. They're basically twinsies. Okay. I'll get the, uh, the one on the right. Okay. <laughs> we'll just say the first one. There's really no... Um, okay. Are you like? Are you looking for a specific? Trait? Yeah, if one of them's like a different color or something. Oh, um, it's a twenty-eight hit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then, do they need to make any sort of? Yeah, uh, it's a deck save. Eighteen. Yeah, that saves. Okay. Uh, okay, so 4d6. Uh, ooh, nice. All right, so they take seven damage of lightning, and then I make a... And the javelin actually goes into them for... Damn it. Uh, six damage. Okay. Anything you'd like to do with your bonus action? Uh, rage. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Horton? Sorry, how far away were they? Fitty. Fitty? Um... I am going to position myself in front of Zerial, if possible. Okay. Are you so, so like in the massive, them. the massive form of Lulu is currently the closest. Do you want to stand in front of Lulu or? Can I stand with like between her legs? Oh yeah, she's huge. Yeah, you can. <laughs> like in between her front legs, like just with my shield up, yeah, ready yeah, to yeah. go. And then I'm going to cast a Call Lightning. Third. Do I have third levels left? Yes. I'm just going to do a third level Call Lightning. Okay. It's a 60 foot radius, so I'll put it closer to us. But it'll... Okay. And then uh, hit him with one of those. It is a. Dexterous save? I believe so, yes. Against 18. 
it, does it affect um, all creatures or just creatures you designate? It, like... it strikes anywhere within five feet. So, so any, I direct where the hit goes. Yeah, that's what I was. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's a twenty-four on the deck save. Okay, so it, half damage. So it takes seven damage. A Lightning. seven. Okay. And Anything then, else? I don't think I have any bonus actions. Uh, no, I'm good. Draco. All right, Draco, two things. First is going to cast Greater Restoration using the charm. Nice. And thankfully I can probably see things again. Um, second thing. When is you do that. Oh, go ahead. When you do that, you you tap into the magic of the charm and your vision doesn't change for a moment and then all of a sudden these creatures appear. Zariel appears, Lulu appears, the two Aaron yeses appear. And yeah. So for some reason in my head I've always called them Aaron eyes. I don't know why. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure it's Aaron, yes. No, I think you're right. It just it just <laughs> blew my mind just when clicked. you said that. It just clicked. Drake I could be. Sorry, Gary, the, go uh, on. No worries. Drake are shitting the pants he's not wearing. Um, that will pretty much end his turn. I have a question for you, Jake. Um, given I now have a ring of spell storing, the way that works is when you get it, generally it has 1d6 minus 1 spells determined by the DM. I rolled a d6 and got a 6. So, oh, but it says determined by the DM. Yep. I get to roll a D6. Well, I think you get to determine the spells. Oh, maybe you get to do both. Dang it. What well, did Bell put in this ring? I got really you? excited about my roll. Do you get to roll? Uh, when found, it contains 1D6 minus 1 levels of stored spells chosen by the DM. Fair enough. You know what? You can have the roll. So it's 5. You yeah. rolled a 6, right? Mm -hmm. So 5 spells, and then I choose the spells. Yes. Is it five spells or five levels? Five levels. Sorry, five levels worth of spells. So if it's a level gotcha. three, it, it's one level three and like a level two or something like that. Let me look. Da, 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 da. All right. It has two paladin spells that you can't cast as well. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not do that. I think with, uh, I think with ring, ring of Spell Storing, because I looked this up in my other campaign, I think I can actually cast them, even if it says uh, spell casting ability of the original caster, but is otherwise treated as if you cast the spell. All right, nice. You can cast so, any spell stored in it, yeah. It has a fourth level charm monster. Whoops. And you need a first level, right? Yep. Sounds pretty darn helpful for the combat we're in right now. And a feather fall. Hmm. Actually, that could be that could actually be useful considering I'm well. No, I'm flying, so no. It useful. could be. Who knows? I guess. I guess Maybe I you don't fly. cast it on yourself. You could be casting it on the huge elephant who can't fly because he gave his boots away. Wait, that effect went away too. Well, I lost my wings when I gave up the sword. True. Oh, I thought everything looked the same. Oh, and then and the I downside... him out of his shoes. The downside of convincing Zariel is that Jazzy doesn't get to experience <laughs> the glory that I had for but a moment. Yeah. I got to do um, one roll with that charisma. He's still huge. He's just not. Well, I'm my usual Wait. huge. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, he's still, what, a I'm medium just, creature? Now I'm back to normal. <laughs> got it. A, a medium creature. Yeah. But you weren't in the air when you gave the sword up. You were kneeled. I was a few feet in the air. He's hovering. fine. 
and I crashed to the ground with a loud thud. <laughs> I laughed. Draco, did and you laugh like a dick? Did you do anything? Uh, yeah, I did the. I cast the thing. That was my action, and I'm just gonna hover a little bit away from Zeriel, so we're not all bunched up. Okay. It's so now the Aaron Yes's turn. The first Aaron Yes. Aaron Yes. Aaron Yes. I'm still blown away by this pronunciation that I think you're 100% correct on. I'm going to check right now. <laughs> I believe you. I'm on your side in this. Aaron Yes. You know, on D&D Beyond, you can look up. Yep. They have the little thing. <laughs> it's Marisha saying Aaron Yes. Oh, I didn't realize that's who did it. Did it. Aaron Yes. It's Matt and Marisha on some of them. So the Aaron Yees, that's not intimidating. Uh, <laughs> the first one pulls out its longbow and takes aim at old Shabby Jerry. Jerry Shabby. Shabbity Shab Shab. Three, three longbow attacks. Covering all the bases. A 17 hit? No, not with the bracers, baby. Nice. The second one is a nine, so that doesn't. And the next one is ding, a 12. Ding. Fucking dumb. I'm like Wonder Woman. Yeah, like... I, was, I was just about to say we got Wonder Pew. Woman over here. <laughs> <laughs> just need a whip. <laughs> or a lasso. She, she doesn't call it a whip. What does she call it? It's a lasso. A lasso. Yeah. The lasso of truth. Man, I am. I yeah. want to see 1984 so bad. Looks really good. Good soundtrack. I don't want to see 1984, the book. Uh, 1984, the book. There, there is a movie. There is a movie about that. Yeah, it's not good. It's got a famous uh, actor in it that died recently. Next thing to go from invisibility. A massive what? creature. Not massive. I always say that, but it's a large <laughs> creature. Um, it's got a hulking body, almost like a seal, um, more muscular walrus type, and it's got a skull face and two horns coming out of it and a infernal dagger that's going to stab, stab. What's it? What's holding the dagger? Wait, a big walrus-like thing is yeah. stabbing does it someone have hands? with a dagger? Yes. It just came out of invisibility. But sure. does it have hands? Yes. Walrus hands or human hands? No. But it's only holding a dagger, so it's like, okay, yeah, I'm on board. All right. Cool. I don't know. What, I don't, what is so unbelievable about this? I said it's kind of like a walrus or a seal kind of i'm an elephant with a hilariously small hand axe but we're all good does it have big <laughs> walrus tusks it does so then it just begs and the a question dagger. why not tusk it <laughs> tusk use your tusk and use a dagger because <laughs> it's got a fucking dagger and a crossbow okay good question. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you guys i'm gonna show you the picture <laughs> It's like a shark attacking you with like a baton. <laughs> I neglected to oh, think baby. about my description for this creature when I made the encounter, and I just came up with it on the spot. And a walrus and, wielding a dagger is all I need. To know. And all, I'm and, all for it. And like when I was right before I said that, I was like, "This is way harder to describe in the moment." I don't know what I'm, how I'm going like, to do this. <laughs> and then a swordfish comes out of nowhere, pulls out a gun. <laughs> this that's not too far off. We're playing D and D here. Like this is basically what we're doing, Dave. <laughs> like, awesome. See what I mean? Like the neck portion is walrusy. Sure, sure. The yeah, head, the head yeah. No, is see, like I just I, I imagined that. like a full-bodied walrus. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> With a skull uh, face. Yeah. With Which, like a dagger in the yeah, flipper. 
neck up, you nailed that description. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't expect you guys to, I, when I said kind of, and then I said skull face, I didn't say, oh, it has a skull face. I wasn't thinking you would be like, oh, it has flippers. It must have flippers. Walrus <laughs> oh, must have. I vote we That's ignore a this image dagger. and go with a full walrus wielding a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, by all means, stab away, stabby, stabby. It appears behind you. Who was I going to... Screw it. It appears behind Sir Jazzy. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Uh, does a 17 hit? No. Some fucking how, out of invisibility, it doesn't stab you. It stabs, and it definitely connects, but I'm wearing some off your plate. Off yeah. plate now. <laughs> uh, it's very scary, though, seeing that appear behind you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not thrilled it. about it, to Hell, be honest. Walrus. That's gotta I mean, be like a world record size dagger. The uh, some would call it a sword. Some might. The uh, second Aaron Yees is going to hit, throw down some longbow shots at Draco. Yay! Uh, seventeen. Hey. I got shield. Uh, AC goes from 17 to plus 5. And a miss. So 22 is your AC right now? Yep. The next shot also misses, but the third one with the 26 hits you for... Seven piercing damage plus 13 poison damage, and I need you to do a constitution saving throw. I like those. Uh, 17 plus 9. Nice. Yeah. You're good. Uh, and now, behind Shabby Jerry, Oh, let me guess. Is it a um? Is it a saber tooth tiger looking creature? This two time, an elephant <laughs> seal with a skull face <laughs> and tusks going up instead of down. As of hands and hands that could be flippers if they were used in such a way, but they are dexterous enough to. That's just freaking me out. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, you're getting daggered is what's happening. <laughs> 25. The dagger, you die by the dagger. 25 to hit, and then it is 11 slashing damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. God damn it. Okay, I'm going to use the charm. Can you decide to oh. use the charm after you sure. roll, but before you know the... Yeah. Oh, really? So after my first roll, I can decide that? As long as you don't know, like... Whether you're going to pass Whether or not. you've passed or not. As long as Jake hasn't responded to it yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is a... 19? That does pass. You still take... Thank God. Six poison damage. And now it is Jazz's turn. Woo! Um, I forgot I could do this, so I'm glad I clicked around a bunch. Um, I'm going to activate Embodiment of the Law, one of my features, and I'm going to, as a bonus action, cast a fourth level spiritual guardians how far away is shabby and his walrus sorry elephant seal he ran off to the side at the beginning uh, so you're right so he's yeah. out of it um so just the one behind me is all i'm really 
focusing on at the moment. Okay. But as a bonus action, I'm going to cast a fourth level spiritual guardians. Okay. Um, which is a wisdom. I'm pulling it 26. Up. Well, he passes like a dick. Like a dick. Uh, <laughs> Thirteen divided by two, six points of damage for spiritual guardians on him, and then as my action, I will uh, hack him to pieces or try to with my uh, my good old hand axe. Okay, that's magical. Nat twenty. Nice. A good old magical hand axe, and it is magical. You are correct. Oops. I'll roll two d six for that. 10 points of whopping critical hand axe damage. Sweet. Sweet. And that'll be my turn. Um, I'm going to stay there. Okay. Am I, how far away am I from Lulu and Horton and Zeriel? Like, were we grouped vaguely? So my spirit, I'm just trying to gauge, like, who's in my spirit guardians currently? Obviously, I'm going to designate all my friendlies. Do you want to be near them? Yeah, I mean, I was probably pretty close to zero because I was the one who gave her the sword to begin okay. with. Okay, you're next to him. Sweet. That's that's where I want to be. So they're in my spirit guardians as well. Okay. That does mean you're further away from Shab Shab, but that's That's fine. fine. It was more for some reason I thought he might be near me and I might have also grabbed his elephant seal guy, but you're right, he moved. So nowhere close. Okay, Lulu's turn. The Mastodon. Grown up from a holophant. Good old Lulu. Mammoth, I mean. Feathered wings and all. She's so proud of her. Yeah, she's... she's really glowing up. She's been with us for so long in different forms. Uh, us in different forms that now, finally... I feel some satisfaction over the fact that she's now a huge golden mammoth again. I just want you to know that. She's 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 a good holophant. Protection from good. That does the AC, right? No. It, uh, it gives, gives disadvantage. disadvantage. Yeah, disadvantage. Right. She's going to cast that on old Zeriel. Oh, thanks. Because I was going to do that next. She saved you from doing that. Yeah, appreciate that. I think I'd have to lay down a fifth level protection from good and evil to do that. <laughs> At this point. Um, also, those of you within close, within 10 feet of Lulu, uh, she projects an aura of invulnerability. Whoa. Sounds good. Sounds too good, honestly. Yeah. It do? You'll find out. All right. At the top of the round, I need, you know what? I'll roll it. Forget it. Nothing happens, as that's how I made the table. <laughs> Shabby. All right, I pre-rolled mine. I'm going to go after uh, Elephant Seal. Yep. Um, does, does an 18 hit? Oh, yeah. 26 damage with my Great Axe. And then nice. a 23 to hit with 22 damage. Jesus Christ. Swinging recklessly. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Horton. I am going to... Uh... First thing I'm going to do is use my divine intervention as an action. 
What do you say to and, old uh, Thor? I'm going to ask Thor to give us the strength to protect Zeriel in her time of need. Okay. And then I'm going to roll it in the dice roller. No, oh, oh, so close. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm just going to stay. That's all I can do. Okay. That was cool. something cool. All right. I'm going to the two wing creatures uh, still in the sky. I'm going to cast a fifth level banishment on both of those and see if I can try to banish both of them. That allows you to pick another creature or something? Yep. Casting at a higher level, I can target one additional creature. Okay. So I'm going to need a charisma save from both of them. Okay. These don't have high charisma. Well, I mean, pretty much everything in hell has high charisma. True. They're very intimidating. But it's worth a try. Or inviting. So inviting. 18 for the first one. Pass. Barely. 26. Uh, that was worth a try. Yes, yes. Anything else? And uh, where I'm currently floating away from Zerilim, is anything, is that other Waller's dude directly near me or no? Is he kind of away? Uh, I assume you're next to Lulu, so you're like with the, within 10 feet. Okay, I'm going to fly away from him. Are you going to fly away from Lulu? Oh, that's right. No, I don't want to fly away from Lulu. Um, no, I actually stay right where I'm at. <laughs> okay. The Aranese. I know there's like a mythological reason for it being said that way. I just don't like it. Uh... Call them Aranos in protest. <laughs> Bum, bum, ba, da, <laughs> uh, nice. What do, nice. What do they want to do? Uh, they want to. They want to try and. Get. I think they're going to go after. This first one's going to shoot some longbow shots at Draco. Twenty-three and twenty-two. Uh yeah, they I'm going to shield or wait, twenty-three. Uh yeah, I'm gonna shield again. Um use my reaction for that. And then one of it's them. It's seventeen misses. plus five. Yeah. Two. You said. Oh wait. You said twenty-two and twenty-three. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I'm not going to use it. Sorry. I miscounted. Nope. They both okay. hit. Okay. Uh, Ten piercing on the first one plus thirteen poison damage. And four piercing on the second one, plus 13 poison damage. Cool. And I need constitution saving throws twice. Uh, 19 on the first one. A lot on the second one. Okay. Nice. Appearing behind... Shabby is what I can best describe as Alec Baldwin wearing a walrus costume, wearing a... I'm just fucking with you. It's still the same ortho Orthon, and uh, it is going to run away. The one that I already attacked, run away? Yeah. Damn Shabby. <laughs> and that... <laughs> <laughs> for my for my hits, the thing that uh, Lulu cast didn't do anything. The aura. Uh, for 
for your hits, no, um, the arrows made it through, correct? Okay. As it's running away, I just yell after it, Blood War, my ass! And then it disappears. A second Aaron, yes, is going to shoot at Jazzy. Bum, 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 bum. What's Zeria looking like? Her wounds are healing slowly. I mean, it's to say slowly, um, it's very, very quickly. Because uh, in real time, this is like, yeah, happening very quick. Uh, first two shots miss, and then I rolled a one, natural one. That one hits. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of my what? characters got hit by? It was the short campaign we had in Waterdeep, right? That got hit by ones and... Yeah, that had the rever- Oh, yeah, yeah, it was your bard. Yeah. You, you not won your rapier up a troll's butt, if I recall. And killed it, yeah, or something. You killed it. I don't know. Um, If only that campaign continued. And he bought a whole fucking $500 thing. I feel really uh, bad about that. I'd take it from him, but I'm not going to pay it for him. Pay for it. I'd buy it from him, but <laughs> at a I discount. I'd receive it from him. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the second Orthon disappears behind you, Jazzy. Oh, he disappears. Okay. Invisible. Yep. Uh, start of his turn. He's in my spirit guardians. Correct. Thank you for reminding me. Glad I remembered. <laughs> 14. Uh, that's a fail. So he takes... 19 points of radiant damage from okay. my uh my my spiked gauntlets for my spirit guardians there it's fourth level so they got the spikes again they have taken on a new feature of angelic feathered wings nice so there's wings on the gauntlets correct and they still slap okay but the gauntlet they don't use All the spikes to be clear <laughs> It's a gauntlet flipper. <laughs> the, the gauntlet has a neck that's kind of walrus, but then a skull face. Yeah. And since I didn't describe the body, it would be a <laughs> walrus's body. Sure. Uh, all right. What do you want to do, Jazzy? It's your turn. Oh, sweet. Um, I would like to... So he disappeared. That changes everything that I was going to do. <laughs> In that case... I'm going to run towards the Aaron Yees. Because mm-hmm. they're still next to each other, right? They haven't yeah. moved, really? They're like 10 feet in the air, though. Sure, that's fine. My Spirit Guardians is 15 feet. Nice. Um, They're 50 feet away still, I take it. Um, yeah. So I will need to dash to get underneath them, Okay. which will be my action. Um, They need to roll, because my Spirit yep. Guardians moved with me. A 16, and I'm rolling Fail. bad, and an 11. Fail. Um, we'll use the same roll, which okay. I, I already forgot how much damage that was. Do you remember? 19. Perfect. Um, <laughs> and then as my bonus action, um, I'm going to cast spiritual, oh, spiritual Weapon. That's not concentration, right? No, it's not. Didn't think so. Um, then I will cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. At fourth level, because that's all, all I got left. Um, and a bigger gauntleted fist will show up in front of one of the two Aranese, whichever one, uh, I believe someone hit them in the first round, right? I did. They've, hit one. they've been hit, yeah. Yeah, the, the more wounded one um, okay. will, will attempt to slap here. Bum, 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 How do you spell Aranese? Uh, e R I N, yes. <laughs> Aaron, yes, is how you spell it. I already lost it. So what's the modifier here? 44. Um, oh, that was garbage. The slap misses. That's a four plus. Oh, 14. God, my spell attack got big. 
And the ones on Google are pretty hot. I didn't expect it to be a plus 10. That's wild. Don't objectify the devils, Dave. Is it objectifying to say that they're hot? I'm fucking with you. <laughs> and also, yes. <laughs> I, I wouldn't seriously say that to anyone. Uh, but yeah, in so, fact, I'd probably say that. But um, yeah, probably <laughs> that's something I would say. Uh, yeah, so that hits. Sweet. I I did not expect that. Uh, and so yeah, that, well, it's that, an eighteen, right? Fourteen. Oh, I thought you said plus fourteen. No, it's a plus ten, which was still surprising. To yeah, me. fourteen doesn't hit. Didn't think so. Okay, we're good. But there is a huge gauntlet fist amongst the tiny gauntleted fists flying around slapping things yep all right lulu lulu lolo lolo is going to bless she's so nice shabby she's not that nice (laughs) (laughs) it's all good well she's smart smarter now she, and fair. She just saw Shabby lay into this Orthon. He has been extremely effective. Good job, Shabby. <laughs> so you're blessed blessed now, Shab. We the top of the round. Battlefield event table that I made that I keep rolling. Why do keep I rolling make... and nothing happens? With you guys, I make tables and it's I ro- just <laughs> I don't get it. Lesson learned. Never put nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, but that's like... I guess. <laughs> I would <Shabby. laughs> So with Bless, Shabby. I basically am adding a D4, a D4 to my attack roll? Or can I add it to the damage? Attack, attack roll. Okay. Attack roll and saving throws. Alright, so I'm going to run to the closest... Uh, Aaron Yee's. Aranese. And pre-rolled everything. Get out my great axe. A 22. Yep. For 29 damage. Yikes. And a 19. Yep. For 28 damage. Yikes. Bum, 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 ba, dum, ba, dum. One of these days I have to play a barbarian just so I can experience these numbers. Horton. It's kind of cool the amount of damage you do, but there's not really a lot of decision making in combat. You're just kind yeah, of like that's that's the drawback with Marshall. Roll, 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 roll. Yep. <laughs> I am going to call down a lightning strike on the one that I hit previously without hitting Sir Jazzy, if possible. Yeah. So deck save, please. I'm Be shocked seen. and amazed at the restraint. Me too. Nineteen. He passes, so he takes six damage. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. I'm just gonna stay. Oh, as a bonus action, I'm just gonna ask Lulu or like yell out to Lulu, "Will healing her speed this up?" And then I'll wait for a reply on her turn. Okay. Draco. I'm going to. Can I get the two uh, Aaron yeses? They're still within 20 feet of each other to throw a fireball at it. Yeah, but there's Shabby and Jazzy. They're in the air, right? Still above them. If I throw it higher, I can still get them without Shabby and Jazzy. Sure. Cool. If not, Draco would do it anyways. So Duck saves, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, deck saves, and I'm up casting it to fourth level. And it's 19. A, that will pass 23. Or, those will both pass, so half damage. And that's 10 90. When the fire hits them, they absorb it and laugh. Cool. So 35 damage, no damage. Yeah, you don't think you damaged them. Awesome. Decent well, rolls, too. Bummer. Yeah, won't use uh, fire anymore. Um, and I did cast a sorcerer spell. Oh, yeah, go ahead and roll your um, shenanigans. Nope. Oh. 
Okay. Aaron Yees. Need to roll wisdom saves. 19 again. Pass. And the other one rolls a 23. Pass. Nineteen have to nine points of radiant damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I want to really emphasize that they're getting slapped, so they don't get slapped in the face, which is the full damage slap, but they are still getting slapped repeatedly. Uh huh. It's not fun. No one likes That's clank slapped. on clank metal sounds. Yeah. Uh. The Aaron Yes draws her longsword and swings at you three times. Jazzy. Yep. Bound to happen. 24 and the second one is a 13. No. Third one's a natural 20 for, yeah. For a bunch. Yeah. The first one that hits is seven slashing. Plus 11, no, check that. Uh, yeah, 11 poison damage. And then the nat 20 is 15 slashing. Uh, check that. Uh, I didn't double it. Twenty-five slashing. Fourteen poison. Okay. You know, I have to say that leveling up every session for the past three or four sessions, my HP nice. has gone just through the roof. So yeah. it's pretty impressive. This is a fun thing. <laughs> leveling quickly is fun. <laughs> it's, it's a neat, neat trick. An Orthon is going to appear and fire its crossbow from its flipper-covered hands. They call him Flipper. At who? At you, Jazzy. Oh, great. 24. I no longer feel great about my HP. Yes, 24 definitely hits. 16 piercing damage plus. Did you say 16? Yeah. Okay. Plus. As it hits you, you feel your body tense up as lightning courses through you. Fascinating. Jesus, I rolled insane. 32 lightning damage. Holy crap! <laughs> oh, okay. Fuck. <laughs> and I you need have you to... his attention. Do I have your attention? And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Damn, right. so you just took Holy like crap. 50 damage, basically? Uh, I just took 103 points of damage. How? No way! Yeah, 18 plus 39 plus 48. I just did the math. Okay. I have nine points left. But I did nat 20 my save. Uh, Constitution is a 23. So there's that. You shrug <laughs> off the paralyzation that was surely coming. Hey, cool. <laughs> Bummer, though. <laughs> uh, okay. The second Aaron, yes, is going to rain great... Vengeance upon Shabby. And we already did the whiz save for both Aaron Yeses, so yeah, we're good there. Long sword time. 17 and worse. 17 does not hit you, correct, Shabby? Correct. Another shit roll. Uh 15. So all the long swords clink off your bracers. Deflected by your great axe. 
and another Orthon appears and is going to shoot Draco. Draco. Yay. Does a 20. I cast shield and fling. Okay. 105 damage. Yeah, 105 damage in that in that round. Jesus Christ. You should heal That's yourself. Insane. That'd be nice. <laughs> if only I had slept before this fight. It's your turn, Jazzy. Oh, that was fast. Uh, beginning of... Oh, never mind. It's beginning of their turn, so they're fine. I am going to... Um... <clears throat> Summon up a large, glowing white ball of energy at the front of my trunk, uh, larger than anything we've seen before so far as I scream out, I choose you, firebird, and I summon a celestial being, a firebird. Okay. Uh, Spirit Guardians, it's concentration, right? Yes. So You want to roll it? Oh, it dropped? Well, it would have dropped anyway because i'm doing this and this is also oh, okay. a concentration okay. spell and also based on those numbers it fucking dropped yeah uh, <laughs> i just need to turn to the correct page um it gets its own initiative as a firebird a small celestial so it's small but it looks like a phoenix uh, is summoned up in front of me and its initiative is a two plus four six so okay. it is so Six remember, it order. acts on the same turn as Lulu. Got it. Um, and I will issue a command to it to say, heal us. Well, heal me. Yeah. <laughs> and heal us. No me. It is not what I will turn. do. What'd you say? Uh, if that's the end of your turn, it will be its turn. That. Yeah, that's the end of my turn. That's a full action, I assume. I'll double check to make sure, but I, I assume it would be an action. Yeah, it's an action. Um, cool. Then its turn, it will cast heal, which it gets one a day nice. on me. <laughs> and I will heal 70 points. Lulu hey, that was handy. That hurt. Um, and that will be, make sure it doesn't have a bonus action or anything. It does not. So that will be its turn. A firebird is uh, hovering right next to me. Okay. It warms me, as a side note. It's pretty I feel hot. Pleasantly warmed. It's actually just a pleasant warming. You feel pleasantly warmed as well <laughs> as unpleasantly warmed by Avernus. Fair enough. It's a weird feel feeling. It's a very strange feeling. Equals out to normal, just warm. Sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lulu's turn, and she hears Horton and says, yes, yes, please do. If you can, pump your healingness into Zeriel. And with that, she does the same and heals, casts heal on Zeriel, which she should have done earlier, but she's doing it now. She's still kind of forgetful, even though she's in a higher state now. <laughs> it's just, it's just Lulu. Is. Yeah. It's just Lulu. It's just Lulu. All right. And at the top of the round, battlefield encounter. Nothing. Nothing happens. An abyssal warhorn sounds nearby. All combatants must make a wisdom save or be <clears throat> frightened. Uh, I get advantage against those. Yeah, I'm going to use another charm. Okay. Uh, I just yes. naturally get advantage, and thank God I did. Ah, my, regu <laughs> my regular roll puts me at 27. 17 for me. Save. So it's a 19 for me. Save. Draco. Uh, I'm looking to see if I can. Yeah, I'm going to bend luck. 
and add a d4. Sixteen. Save. Yes. Bend luck. No, that's not like. What is that from? It's a reaction from my sorcerer. I spent oh. two sorcery points to do it. Nice. My last two sorcery points. Sweet. Everybody makes it. I need to roll for the devils. Devils. Fuck. That's two nat ones. Good. Good. Take that. Okay. And with that, Zeriel gets up In her full form, still injured, but looking a lot better. And she's going to join initiative. Sweet. And she has a very good initiative. As that goes... I'm just gonna put my food in the fridge real quick. One sec. Uh, bye bye. That's not the Zeriel stat block I wanted. Damn it! Damn it! That's infernal Zeriel. Yeah, exactly. That's Angelic that's... Zeriel. <laughs> exactly. We need the fun one. Yeah, legitimately, I think they're probably both fine. True. She seems like kind of a badass, regardless. Fair enough. Where is her stat block? It's the... That block for fucking get it. She uh casts a spell and banishes Can she banish all the creatures? <laughs> she might be able to. Yeah. All four creatures are going to roll to see if they get... That's another natural one. Uh, natural one would have been nice when I cast it. Three have failed. Damn. Uh, one makes it. The two Aaron yeses poof with a pop and one of the Orthons do. And for all intents and purposes, I will say that the other Orthon is going to turn invisible and escape for the moment. And she's keeps her concentration for a minute. Every six seconds, her wounds heal more. And by the end of it, she is uh, pretty much back to full full form and about to heal the shit out of her. Is she okay. better or worse looking than Jazzy? Much better looking. Like not so Jazzy better. is not that bad. <laughs> His firebird did a lot. <laughs> it's like it's like comparing the Venus de Milo to to a tangle of a tangle of vines uh-huh like 
I guess if you're into it, you might say they're on the same level, but like comparing her to Jazzy when he was just so gorgeous. His small, bleedy, beady black eyes turned into like silver. large, beautiful, silver blue. And his trunk was just like the perfect length in proportion to his body. It and lasted for like an muscular. hour. Yeah. yeah, it was really short lived. But, but it's like comparing that. He was gorgeous. Yeah. Zeriel turns to you guys. And thanks you for what you've done. And she plucks a golden feather from her wings and hands it to you, Jazzy, and says, this is for all of you. When you use this feather, I will come to your aid wherever you are, whenever you need help. And she says, uh, what? I thank her. Okay. Thank you, my lady. She says, I'm going to get El Terrell back to where it needs to be. Do you need and... us to take care of the companion? Oh, I was just going to smash it with my sword. No, but hands we, up, by all means. We've I got these if these. you want it. <laughs> Do those yeah. unlock it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what Bell said. But he's oh sure, devil, so sure, yeah, <laughs> he's gonna die at some point soon. Probably I'm going to kill him. Good job. Uh, and she says, "Yes, please do. Let me help you." And she casts fly on all of you, and Woo. sends you up there. And goes with you. And as you approach the companion cube, you can only make it out based on where the lightning is striking. You can, the the lightning emanates from a central point. But as you get closer, there's magical darkness around the actual cube. Uh, Zeriel casts daylight and removes the darkness. And you see this metal sphere large sphere uh and there's little holes you can put the the uh adamantine rods in when you do just for flavor because my firebird can i also have it cast daylight to give us more daylight there's a shit ton of daylight (laughs) so much much daylight. daylight uh the top half hemisphere of the sphere opens and a planetar flies out of it. Huge planetar. Sure. And unexpected. Uh, <laughs> says, sorry, uh, that's what I wanted. No, I don't want Tiamat. Get out of here. <laughs> Uh, where is his name? Fuck it. His name is Facsimile. Uh, Facsimile says, Thank you so much. I've been locked in there for decades. You're so welcome, dude. I raise a questioning eyebrow to Zariel, who created <laughs> the companion. <laughs> Zariel says, I'm so sorry, brother. I was not myself when I created this device and I ask for your forgiveness. And the planetar uh, says to Zariel, pauses, but looks at her with uh, pools of, of silver, uh, similar to what filled Jazzy's eyes for about an hour. Uh, says to Zariel, you're forgiven. You must forgive each other if we are to expunge the scourge of the blood war. And Zeriel says, yes, but right now we must get El Terrell back to the material plane. And uh, facsimile says, I will push, take a, take the city back to the material plane 
If you can break the chains, and Zerio says, no problem. She flies away at an incredible pace, breaking chains. You guys are floating high in the air right now. Just out of uh, curiosity, would you say it was approximately 90 feet per round? I'd say it's more. Okay, cool. Like she's I just wanted to know if I had like the full amount of her power when I wielded the sword or if it no. was just a fraction of the power. <laughs> yeah, it helps to start Bummer. as an, as like an angel. Uh, she's using Dimension Door and all sorts of shit. Gotcha. Uh, loud, resounding uh, snaps of infernal iron uh, is heard throughout the entire plane of Avernus. And the ground vibrates beneath you obviously you can't feel it but you can see things shaking and uh pulling back uh you guys can't see this but for narrative purposes facsimile is from beneath the moat of earth carrying el Terrell, pushing it up now that the chains are broken and uh single-handedly pushing the city high into the air and above Above the city, a portal opens uh, with a deeply dark uh, night sky familiar to you guys in the past when you were on the material plane before you died down here and got resurrected by Bell. Uh, and Bell says, as you are rising with the city, contract completed. You're free to rejoin the living on the material plane. Good working with you all. All of you hear this in your heads. And El Terrell is shoved back to where it was. And the city is still on fire. But uh, Zeriel, with your guys' help, uh, sets things back in order, removes the rest of of the the uh, demons and any stragglers left behind in the cities uh, that joined you guys. And uh, older Raven Guard appears. Holy shit, he's still alive. Uh, and Zeriel and him speak and she thanks him for protecting El Terrell, for being a hero of this city, and Older... Well, we, we were way more effective than Older was. Just saying. True, but... true. <laughs> uh, and she says to Older, now that you've done this for El Terrell, and El Terrell is right where it belongs, hopefully this will end the feud between Baldur's Gate and El Terrell. And uh, she plucks a feather from her wings and gives it to older Raven guard and he thanks her and moves on. And you guys also get some stuff. I do believe. I love stuff. Stuff is fun. <sighs> um, there's what's his name? Oh, Nassius. That's the planetar's name. Not facsimile. Nassius. If you could believe it, it's not facsimile. <laughs> um so Lulu guides you uh down to Zeriel. Um and Where's the box text I need? Box text. Box mm -hmm. text. Confide a mystery. Box Read text. History. I can't find it. Um, you guys don't need more box text. <laughs> but, uh, but. You she, love it so much, Jake. <laughs> she, uh, says to you guys you are heroes of El Terrell and will for forever be known as such even you turning to you Draco 
even though I can't stand the, stand the sight of your infernal heritage, you'll be known in my eyes and amongst my people as a hero. And uh, thanks each of you. And asks you what you will do now that you've saved El Terrell, uh and have your lives back. I respond and say, I will await messenger from Torm. He has not spoken to me since I uh, failed him. Okay. Oh, I'm uh, I'm blanking on the name of the people that went the flaming fish. Yes, that's from Baldur's Gate. Okay, not Baldur's Gate. The other one, Hell Riders. Hell Riders. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna tell her I was a Hell Rider, and so I will do what I can to I, I don't know if there's any hell riders left or if there's not you know maybe remake something new to continue defending El Toro. there's not many good hell riders left and I would love it if you helped me rebuild the hell riders so yeah. we may protect this realm and gladly defeat the devils and demons of the blood war draco i'm simply gonna keep trying to redeem myself and make a name for myself on this new plane shabby well now that uh el Terrell is back i can now go back to my humble servitude of uh one of the great families of El Terrell. Thank you again. The city thanks you. The realm thanks you. And the people around the planet thank you for surely. I would have continued my reign of terror in bringing more cities down to Avernus. And I just tell this her. This took a couple of good debaters. This was not the way. No, it wasn't. The father of lies is Trixie. It's convincing, though. Very, very convincing from what I've read. Some surprisingly charming. He's just the nicest guy. And uh, that's where we'll leave it. Cool. Wow. I stand corrected. That wrapped up very quickly. I believe it was three <laughs> sessions from the six session uh, <laughs> prediction. So Jake wins. Jake no, wins. I, I said double the six. You said double. He said half then after you said double. Yeah. <laughs> you, you would have been probably. Well, because under... we were only at like the beginning of chapter four or something at that point. You were also reading along too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You I, twelve. But I never read. Like, I never read ahead. It's not like good. I was. I just knew where we were in the book. I think it would have been more than twelve if I would have stuck to book yeah. stuff. Thanks, guys. So I'm thrilled because if you look at the binding of this book that I purchased maybe two weeks before this campaign started, I have not yet opened it. Oh, nice. I get to open it now and see what's in it. I, I remember when <laughs> My... I pre-ordered that and you you we were talking at work and you're like, I can't even use it. I was like, shit. My <laughs> binding is Did you not apart. know that that's where we, we had decided to play? No, I had I had ordered it. I had bought it before we decided to play it, but then ah. like right after I had ordered yeah, it, yeah. we that's had fine. decided to play. So it was like I got it. It was just like I mean, there's a lot in it that has nothing to do. Well, there's a lot in it. There's a lot of background information. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You totally. Can read a... That doesn't really. I didn't want to open it. I didn't want to read it because I didn't want to ruin anything, which I've done, yeah, I'm not yeah. judging for, for how you went, like following along. Totally no, I, I accidentally I ruined a couple things for myself. So it's exactly. It's, I wanted ruin? to make sure just, that I it's did just not. It's better not to read anything. Yeah. What did you ruin? I forget. It was like there was like, uh, I accidentally read the thing with the sixes, that puzzle. Oh, and so I just didn't participate in that one. Um, there was like one other thing like that where I knew the I like 
there was some castle that we went to where we had to play some piano and I like accidentally read like if you play the piano you get something good and I was like well guess I'm not going to be playing that piano <laughs> oh yeah the chapel I believe I played I yeah, believe I smashed that. on I the like, keys you really are loud <laughs> yeah well, I, I have not opened that book. I absolutely promise that I have not touched that book since I got <laughs> it. Like, I did not want to ruin a thing. No, Rollercoast was Rollercoast was like, I'm not touching that piano or that <laughs> yeah. organ or whatever. And you're like, I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to make some noise. It was probably an Ooh. organ knowing a church. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll get out of the stream and we'll continue talking. Uh, thanks for watching this campaign of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. We lived. We, we did, did all the it. good things. We, we were a good group. We lived. Kind of. After we lived we died multiple times. And died and died. <laughs> Look, if you went to hell and you didn't lose at That's least one character, then you did something wrong. As Seriously. far as I'm concerned. <laughs> If the important you, thing you went is to hell all... and you didn't lose a character within one round of creating that character. No, no. If you did that, you did something wrong. <laughs> the important thing is that every time we die, we re-rolled completely new characters. Complete with long ass backstory. Very important. <laughs> completely different. Yep. Uh cool. Thanks, guys. Um I don't know if I have a game to plug this week. So we'll just leave it at that. Thank you for joining us, to, watching, to, listening. Yeah, to, what? What happened to Turk Bango? Yeah, I don't know if we have a game this week. So that's oh, what I'm okay, saying. Okay. I just want to make sure he's still, he wasn't oh, dead. Oh, he's still with anything. us. All right, cool. All right, His sister good. had a had a <laughs> collar, an explosive collar strapped to her neck. Ooh, bummer. Uh, it's a rough day. Very nice to see explosive nanites in her blood too Shit. oh double bummer so uh yeah so turk's in a bad spot you're saying yeah and he's currently arguing arguing with his sister because they have that sort of relationship uh sure, sure. you know Let how people just kind of what it sounds like when they <laughs> speak to their siblings no matter what age they are they kind of revert to a more immature state sure Yep. kind of like that yep cool thanks guys and uh we'll end it there uh be kind to yourself and be kind to others uh we'll see you maybe in another campaign Definitely. wear your masks <laughs>